Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidil enbiya ve mursalin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in ve nittaba'ahum bi ihsanin ila yevmiddin ama ba'd. Fa'udu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya eyyühel lezine amanu ati'u allaha ve ati'u rasul ve ulil emri minkum. وقال تعالى قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون وقال تعالى فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله لا يقبض العلم انتزاعا ينتزعه من العباد ولكن يقبض العلم بقبض العلماء حتى إذا لم يبقى عالم اتخذ الناس رؤسا جهالا فسئلوا فأفتوا بغير علم فضلوا وأضلوا وكما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Respected علماء كفاز elders brothers sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today just before we arrived here for Jum'ah. Some of us may have attended the Janaza Salah and the burial of one of the most prominent scholars of Leicester. Hazrat Maulana Adam Saab of Jami Masjid, who passed away early morning yesterday. His Janaza Salah was attended by thousands in Spinny Hill Park and also his burial was attended by hundreds if not thousands of people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him the highest status in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of his efforts and good deeds which he has done in this life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him peace and comfort in his grave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise his status in the hereafter. Amen. Brothers, when some alim or scholar passes away, it is mentioned in our books that mawtul alimi mawtul alim, that the death of an alim is the death of this world. You see, the efforts and the work done by Hazrat Maulana Adam son Rahmatullahi alayhi cannot be underestimated nor should it be forgotten by anyone in Leicester. Hazrat Maulana Adam Sahib Rahmatullahi alayhi he came to Leicester he studied in India in, a, in Dabil Darul Ulum and then he went to Darul Ulum Dewan and after studying there he went back to Gujarat and he taught there for a while before the people some people in Malawi called him there and he became an Imam in a masjid in Malawi. And then he was called over to the UK in 1977. And he came to Leicester and he was the Imam of Masjid al Noor in Burner Street for a little while. And then he established Jami Masjid in uh, Highfields where he then served as somebody who established the masjid, established the maktab, established the madrasa, established everything around there, and served as the imam and the lead imam for 48 years. 48 years. Now, what a legacy he has left. What kind of legacy he has left. I was speaking to somebody today that the Madani schools that is thriving today, where the students are oversubscribed because of the teaching that happens there and being done in an Islamic ethos that was established in Jami Masjid by Hazrat Maulana Adam Sahib Rahmatullahi He still was the patron, patron of that school. Similarly, just speaking about him himself, it is mentioned that he never used to miss 
takbir e ula and the first takbir behind, as, as the imam or behind the imam. He was the first day in the masjid. In the, when he came in the 70s, at that time when he was imam, his uh, son was mentioning yesterday that people never used to come for Fajr Salah. Sometimes he used to be on his own, but he used to be there. And, you know, when you look around Leicester today, Alhamdulillah, thumma, Alhamdulillah, there are many, many people who are practicing Islam. If you look at, or if you were to take a survey of the towns and cities in the UK where Islam is practiced at a certain level, then Leicester would be written down as one of the towns and cities that where the mosques are still visited regularly by individuals and by congregations and the children are attending maktabs and madars. What is the reason for this? What is the reason for this? You can recognize the impact of an alim by looking at a place where there is no alim. By looking at an opposite. By looking at an opposite. You can value a car by asking someone who doesn't have a car. You can value, you can learn the value of anything when you ask somebody you ask somebody who's blind and ask them the value of an eye and they will be able to tell you the value of an eye because they cannot see you can ask somebody the value of an arm and ask somebody who doesn't have an arm and they will tell you the value of an arm you go to Gaza today and you ask the value of a leg from those people whose legs have been blown off and they will tell you the value of a leg. Similarly, those places where there has been no alim, no scholar, they will be able to tell you the value that Leicester has received by Molana Adamsa being here, being here since the 1970s. It is said, I was speaking to somebody now just after the janazah, he says that majority of the masajid in Leicester, majority of the masajid in Leicester will have some kind of connection to Molana Adamsa. It will either be his student or his student student who is now the Imam of a masjid in Leicester. Just imagine the legacy. How many thousands of students have learned how to perform salah because of Hazrat Adam Sah, Rahmatullahi. How many students have learned Alif Ba Ta Tha and to learn how to read the Quran because of Hazrat Malala Adam Sah, Rahmatullahi. How many students have become hafiz of the Quran because of Hazrat Malala Adam Sah, Rahmatullahi. How many students have become Alim Adeen because of Hazrat Malala Adam Sah, Rahmatullahi. How many girls have become Alima? How many women have become an alima because of Maulana Adam Sabrahmatullahi? It's nothing short of a huge legacy that has been left behind by Hazrat Maulana Adam Sabrahmatullahi. And Hazrat Maulana Adam Sab, whenever, uh, you know, I, I think about areas where there has been no alim, there has been no alim. His sons, all three sons, are ulama. His daughters are alima. Because of them, how much. Deen has spread. Mufti Muhammad ibn Adam, Dam al Um al Aliya goes all over the world. Hazrat Walana Ahmad Ali Sab does lots of work here and in Turkey and other places around the world. Hazrat Walana Imran Sab does, uh, runs the madrasa here. All of this because of Hazrat Walana Adam Sab. Yeah. And Hazrat Walana Adam Sab, it is mentioned that he, he stayed in that area and did fikr and did, had concern because. This is what the true alim is. You see, we who have grown up in this country and we owe it to our elders, we owe it to our elders who uh, they uh, made so many sacrifices so that our iman can be protected. Our iman can be protected. 
if it wasn't for the sacrifices of our elders, then no one here can say that we would have even attended the Salat al Jumu'ah. I live in London, in the east end of London. Again, alhamdulillah, we have had lots of ulama in the east end of London. <coughs> there are lots, lots of masajid, lots of madaris, and we are very fortunate. But you go five miles away, five miles away, and there is a community which is a Muslim community. Muslim community. And that Muslim community, if you go there, they never had a maktab system. They never had madrasa system. They never had ulama who protected the iman, who taught salah, who protected the, who, who did the tazkiyah and the purification of the heart, who reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what happened? That community there, if you go at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at midnight, and the shops will be open, those shops are owned by Muslim, and you will be able to find liquor and alcohol from those shops. Our Muslim shops. Why? Because the ulama were not there, and the people were not connected to the ulama. It's been a great blessing for each and every one of us that we are connected to ulama. And we have to respect ulama. Remember, what is an alim? Today, we, we live in a time where everything is available on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram. And I met one brother one day and he said, Mawlana, is this mas'ala correct? Is this, uh, uh, this ruling correct? So I said, where did you get it from? He said, most of my rulings I get from TikTok. Most of my rulings I get from TikTok. I said, who do you listen to? He said, they just uh, uh, keep on going down the reels and anyone who comes. Is this what ilm has become? Inna al-ilm deenun. Ilm is deen. This ilm, this knowledge of Quran and Hadith is our religion. And has religion become so cheap that we take it from TikTok, we take it from Instagram without even knowing the source? Is that how we study our maths? Is that how we study our science? Is that how we study our GCSEs? Is that how we study our degrees? Is that how we study our MAs and our PhDs? When it comes to that, we pay tuition. And we go and sit with people and we pay 15 pounds per hour just to make sure that we are successful in this world. To get a BA and an MA and a PhD next to our names. But when it comes to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to the knowledge of Allah, then it's become so cheap that we don't want to go to the ulama. And this is a ploy, this is a tactic from the enemies of Islam that they want to disconnect you from the ulama. Remember this, they want to disconnect you from the ulama because they know that if you are connected to the ulama, you will get the correct knowledge. And once you get the correct knowledge, you will be steadfast on the deen. And once you are steadfast on the deen, you become someone who is firm and do not break your principles. You don't compromise your principles. And because of this, they want to break you from the ulama. They want to break your connection from the ulama. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions, Al-ulama warathatul anbiya. That is the ulama and the scholars who are the inheritors of the Anbiya, who are the heirs of the Anbiya, of the, of the Prophets. Now, if somebody, if a child is an inheritor from his father, if a child is a heir of his father, they will receive inheritance. They will receive some money. And we know how, what happens these days. So many fights happen after a father passes away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect each and every one of us. Say Ameen loudly, you don't want fights after your father passes away. Yeah? Say Ameen loudly. So many fights are happening. I work in the hospital, when a father dies, even before the father dies, I see two brothers are fighting. Two brothers are fighting. And what are they fighting for? They're already fighting for the inheritance. Yeah. This is the world that we live in. We live in the world of the dunya. We live in the world of the love of this world. And this is what's really, really scary. And this is why we need ulama. Ulama to guide us. And ulama who have taqwa. Ulama who have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulama haq. 
Those ulama who are on the haq, we need to follow those ulama. So a child inherits from his father. He inherits money. And when it came to the ulama, the Prophet ﷺ said, Al ulama wa al anbiya, that the anbiya, when they are giving out their inheritance, they have given their inheritance to the ulama. Just imagine if a millionaire and a child is inheriting from his father, from the millionaire, and he's an only child, and he takes all the money, everyone runs to him. I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. I want to be your friend. Yeah? Why? Even before the father dies, the friends at school, they realize his father, millionaire. If I become friends with him, when he goes, <coughs> good friend. Yeah? That's how we look. So if that is our concept and our thinking with a millionaire who's going to be the, the child of a millionaire who's going to inherit that kind of money, then what kind of friendship should we be keeping with those who have inherited from the Anbiya Allah What kind of friendship should we have with the ulama? And the Prophet in one hadith narrated by Imam Tirmidhi and which has been graded as Sahih. The Prophet was asked about an alim and an abid. The difference between an alim and an abid. An alim, a, a knowledgeable person and a worshipper. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the difference is bit, uh, the example of an alim and an abid is like the example of me ala adnaqum compared to your lowest one. Prophet ﷺ said an alim is so high that it's an example of me in front of the lowest of the lowest in front of you. Allah. This is an alim. And the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take knowledge by, by taking the ilm out of the hearts of people. Allah takes knowledge away by removing and taking away the ulama. By taking away the ulama. Hazrat Mawlana Adam said, he dedicated his life for the community. For the community, 48 years. You and I, we want the best cars. We want the best houses. Mawlana Adam Sab could have had the best car, could have had the best houses. But no, he dedicated his time to the masjid. Anyone who came, he would give them time to teach them. Anyone who came, he would give them time to purify their hearts. Anyone who came, he would help them. And that's why when he bought a house very early on, he bought it right in front of the masjid. In front of the masjid. And it was a two-bed house. Two-bed house. The family grew. Five children. Did he think about going into a three-bed, a four-bed, or a five-bed? Or even when you have one child, you and I are thinking of seven-bed. He had five children. He said, no, because the masjid is here. My community is here. I will not move from here. And he stayed there for 48 years to serve the community. That's what you call dedication. Dedication. And the legacy, what has he taken? The other day, I was in a talk. One brother said that once I was called to help in a janazah salah. Janazah salah. He said, this was a relative, far distance relative, and he lived far away from us. So because I was a knowledgeable person, I was called to him to help in the janazah salah. Then, whilst we were going through his papers, he had no relatives there, we noticed how much money he had in his bank account. How much money did he leave in his bank account? 875,000 pounds. Yeah, I know what you're all thinking. I wish I knew him. I'm thinking the same. Yeah. He left 875,000 pounds and he died because of cancer. And there was nobody left from his family. Hazrat Mawlana Adam Sahib, he might have left with zero. Zero. But what he has taken in the grave, you and I cannot imagine and you and I cannot even count. Infinity. Infinity. Majority of the people in Leicester who are reading Salah, all the reward is going to him. Majority of the people who are reading Quran, all the reward is going to him. Whilst he is sleeping comfortably in the grave, 
How much reward will be gathering for Hazrat Mawlana Adam Sallallahu Brothers, don't be fooled by this dunya. If we are to learn a lesson today, this couple of lessons I just want to finish now. One, whenever an alim leaves this world, we all become orphans. We don't realize, we don't realize. But the alim just being on this earth is a rahmah, it's a ghanima, it's a ni'mah. But the alim leaving this world and he goes into the grave, it leaves such a huge gap that those angels that used to come at the Hajjud Salah when he used to perform Salah, at the dua that he used to make in the Hajjud Salah, those angels are no more coming anymore. And the protection that we used to have because of Maulana Adam Sab, Rahmatullah Ali, that protection is lifted and fitna start to come into Leicester. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a ni'mul badal that will protect the people of Leicester and the people of the UK and the whole world. We don't realize just one alim, one alim, one true alim, one true lover of Allah, one true wali of Allah, leaving this world, how much nuqsan and how much uh, there is uh, problems going to come in this world. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of his uh, words was, kharab al ardi, that the, the, the earth is spoiled. How? Biqabdi al ulama. By the leaving of the ulama, by the leaving of the fuqaha, and by the leaving of Ahlul Khair fiha, that the good people of this world leave this world. So we have to be scared, and we have to make dua, and we have to turn to Allah. Ramadan is coming, turn to Allah and make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards Hazrat Mawlana Adam Sab to the best that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give him. And we make dua that Allah, please give us someone else in his place. And we have to turn to Allah. Manana Adam Sab might not have had the bank accounts that you and I have, but Manana Adam Sab has taken a greater bank account in the year after. Greater bank account. Legacy. And the second lesson we need to learn is what legacy are we going to leave for ourselves? What legacy? Prophet said that you're not going to leave anything except the, when the person dies, sadaqah. That, uh, that sadaqah which uh, is perpetual. So if you do sadaqah, it will help you. Ilmu yuntafa'u bihi. Knowledge through which people will benefit. How much knowledge he gave because of which people are benefiting. And your child who makes dua, he's got children who are going to make dua. What are we going to leave behind? The question is, what have we done? What have we done? And what are we doing? Where are we going? You know, when COVID came, People didn't know what was around the corner. Today, you and I do not know what is around the corner for us. If there's something that we need to learn, death is always around the corner. Death is always around the corner. We need to turn to Allah. Clean our heart. Make tawbah. Repent to Allah. Turn to Allah. And remain steadfast on that tawbah. And try and leave some kind of legacy that will benefit us in the hereafter as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward Hazrat Mawlana Adam sallallahu alayhi wa uh, with the best and best of jannahs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with him on the day of judgment with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to connect with ulama. Ulama ki qadar kare. Value the ulama that we have. Because they have the knowledge of Quran and Hadith the Quran and Hadith is the knowledge of Allah. That means they are connected to Allah. If you connect with them, you are connected to Allah. Connect with the ulama. Do not disconnect with the ulama. There is a huge effort to try and disconnect the Muslims from the ulama. And then everyone follows their own deen, own religion. And then that's it. Then everyone will go astray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from going astray. May Allah keep us steadfast on Iman. Wa afu da'wan alhamdulillah ibn al-Amin. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiru wa natubu ilayhi.